If you're thinking about building an app on Bubble, you've probably heard it's pretty powerful, but when you sign up, it's like, where do you even begin? There's an editor, templates, plugins, AI tools, different pricing options. It can feel like you've been dropped into the middle of a city with no map. So in this video, you're gonna get a big picture view, the entire Bubble ecosystem simplified. This way you know what the different pieces are, how they fit together, and where you should focus first. This is gonna be helpful if you're new to no code or if you're just looking to build smarter. All right, let's dive in. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I've broken everything down into five different components. We have infrastructure of the entire Bubble platform, so things like hosting and security. We have costs, so you understand what your different pricing plan choices are, um, any potential add-ons that you can uh, add to your application. The build component is sort of the core here. This is your app editor where you're designing your pages, putting your database together, creating all of your workflow logic. And you have some supporting components such as integrations, so you can connect to third-party systems, and community, which is a huge part of the ecosystem. So I'm gonna help you understand if you need to add something to your app or if you need to seek support, you know exactly where to go in this entire world, all right? Now, I'm gonna switch over to this more detailed view. Don't be alarmed, we're gonna go through this step by step. Uh, but this is, you know, all of these components kind of split out into sort of subcomponents so that you can really see that there's a lot going on behind the scenes. It's really not just about the actual build of your application. There's a lot that Bubble is handling for you. There's a lot of supporting resources that you can take advantage, a lot of optional things that you can add to your app. Um, so, you know, the more you know what's available, the, the better position you'll be in to create a fantastic app. Okay, so we'll start with infrastructure first and then we'll go through the rest of the components. Just remember that everything is gonna lead back to your build, right? Your app editor, everything is to support getting you to create an app. I mean, that's why we're here, right? So for infrastructure, these subcomponents are more on the technical side. These are the things that Bubble is handling for you. Uh, and, and this is what makes a no-code platform so much easier to work with, especially as a non-technical entrepreneur. You know, you don't have to worry about figuring out hosting for your app or, or encrypting your data. Uh, this is, again, this is Bubble's responsibility as a platform to provide an environment that's safe for you to build an app on, okay? So the first piece here we have is security and compliance. Um, Bubble is SOC 2 Type 2 compliant, which is essentially a trust badge where they've proven, you know, through audits that they've met certain criteria uh, to keep your app safe. Bubble is also GDPR compliant, so if you're in the EU, very important regulation uh, around how personal data is uh, stored and transmitted. We have data encryption, a lot of technical details happening behind the scenes to protect your actual data. Then we have the support component uh, of the infrastructure. Lots of different ways to get help when you're building your app. There's the manual, which is essentially like the dictionary of the entire bubble system. Uh, you know, not just definitions on how things work, but also suggestions on how to use them, best practices. Um, there's videos and things sprinkled throughout the manual. Very helpful resource to go to. The community forum is very active. You know, you've got Bubble team members in there also answering questions, posting announcements and updates. Um, the Bubble forum is really where I started learning the most, you know, almost a decade ago. Uh, we're in there all the time still, and if you ever have a question, you know, if you're stuck on how to accomplish something or if you run into like a troubleshooting issue, highly recommend that you post in the forum to get some help there. There's a lot of great people uh, helping each other out. Bug reports, if you find something with the platform, you can submit a bug report to get in touch with Bubble support. Um, email support is their primary method of support. There's no phone support here, um, but depending on the pricing plan that your app is on, you may you know, fall under a general support system or priority support. And then I'll scroll up just a little bit. Bubble also has an academy, which is a series of videos uh, for getting started with the platform, how to use a lot of the core uh, capabilities uh, of the system. So if you haven't gone through those videos, those are very helpful um, you know, to, to learn from. Then we have app management. So you know, you've got a lot of different settings within your application editor to uh, run things behind the scenes as the administrator of your app. So there are monitoring tools. So you can see what your activity consumption or your workload consumption is looking like. Uh, that's gonna be tied to your pricing plan as well. So it's important. Logs that tracks all of the activity going on in the application, super helpful troubleshooting tool if you need to uncover, you know, uh, dates and times of when certain things occurred, why something might have failed. The logs are very helpful there. Billing, of course, you know, bubble pricing, which we'll talk about next in, in just a moment here, uh, is typically, see, you can look at it more as like a package uh, where you can combine certain optional pieces. So there's a billing management area to help you understand, you know, what you're paying on a monthly or maybe even annual basis. 
You can export uh, some information out of your application. So you can export your data through CSV. You can export um, a JSON file of your Bubble app. Note that you cannot export the underlying code of your Bubble application. Bubble apps only work on Bubble, okay? Um, Bubble is built on uh, AWS, Amazon Web Services. That's the hosting system that they use. So that's a critical component of the infrastructure here. Uh, we've got version control, lots of different um, variations of version control depending on the pricing plan that you're on. Uh, you have obviously deployment settings to publish things to live. You have collaboration uh, opportunities depending on the pricing plan. You can work with other people. You can create separate branches so that you're not stepping over each other. Um, you can, of course, connect your application to a domain. So everything related to publishing and, and, and creating backups, uh, you know, save points of your work. So if you need to revert, uh, all of that is managed under the, this very powerful version control system. Um, Bubble also has a lot of advanced capabilities for enterprise uh, level applications. So uh, if you need to go on a dedicated instance where you're on a, an isolated server, uh, you, know, you can talk to the Bubble team to get set up with that kind of package. Um, you also have more capabilities in terms of when new Bubble uh, features are available to your app, when you want to actually incorporate them into your application. Uh, you can white label things a little bit further. There's a whole sub app system, uh, which you can use to create, you know, a primary application and a lot of kind of clones that are derived from that primary, really popular with SaaS applications and um, franchise systems, things like that. And we have some AI tools, which is fairly new for Bubble, um, but you can see that they're uh, definitely making a push to become more AI friendly. Um, there's a, an app generator that we can create an app just from a prompt. Uh, you can also build out pages using an AI tool. So this is a space that I do expect to grow um, significantly as time goes on. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the pricing component of the Bubble ecosystem. This paywall really is what gets your editor access to certain levels of the infrastructure. Um, ju just going to jump back to this tab here real quick. Not every one of these infrastructure subcomponents are actually accessible to each pricing plan um, that, that you can apply to your application. Um, of course, there's a baseline of you know, security and, and you know, stable environment that every app gets. But for example, connecting to a domain, you have to be on a paid plan to do that. Collaboration, you also have to be on a paid plan to do that, invite people to your editor to work with them. Uh, so depending on the pricing plan that you choose, you may or may not have access to those things, or you may have limited access to those things, all right? So the only thing that's really required for every bubble application is you have to be on a plan of some kind, either the free plan, which is limited, um, but enough to get started, of course, or any one of the paid plans. And there's several tiers. The higher in tiers you are, the more access you have to you know, more parts of the infrastructure. Now over here, we have some optional uh, uh, components that can go into your pricing package overall. Uh, if your application needs more file storage, you know, more than what your pricing plan already comes with, then you can uh, do an add-on of file storage on a monthly basis. Uh, your application may need some paid plugins uh, to get extra capabilities uh, within your functionality, within your features. Uh, this is also something that you can pay as a one-off or as a subscription. So that would be added to you know, what I'm calling the, the pricing package for your app. Then you have uh, things related to your workload consumption. So every plan comes with a certain number of workload units that you can consume. This is essentially how your activity is tracked. Uh, so more complex, heavier applications are going to consume more workload units. If you need more workload units on a monthly basis, you can optionally add workload tiers. You can also enable overages so that if you exceed your monthly allowance, you can go into a pay-as-you-go model so that your app is never taken offline. Okay, we actually have a separate video that goes into creating, you know, the most cost-effective pricing package you can. Uh, I'll throw a link for that video into the description below if you want to learn more about it. Uh, but this is an important, you know, component of the ecosystem that I think is. Uh, you know, enough to kind of give it its own uh, branch here because it, it really is the paywall for what you have access to uh, from your applications editor. And remember that every app has to be on its own plan. You cannot have multiple apps sharing a plan. Okay, real quick here. If you're finding this helpful, we have so much more to teach you in our free extended workshop over at coachingnocodeapps.com slash workshop, where we'll guide you through our four-phase approach for going from idea to app. 
So if you're looking for a start to finish guide, go ahead and register for it when you're done with this video and you'll get immediate access to the training. I've got the link in the description below and on the screen right now. For now, let's head back to our lesson. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into really the heart of this entire system, which is the app editor. This is where you build your application, design your pages, organize your database, uh, create your workflow logic. So building an app means building web pages and or mobile pages. The native mobile uh, uh, builder is still in beta. We're very close to that being released. Uh, to just general bubble users. So keep an eye out for that. We'll definitely have content uh, published once that's all ready. Um, but your builder, your editor, is made up of these three core sections. Um, your design canvas, where you actually put your layouts together, you create your pages, these are the screens that your users will see. The workflow, so all of the logic to make things happen, right? When you click on a button, what do you want to, to happen? Uh, your database, so you can create custom structures around how you want to organize all of your data. And of course, there's a huge settings area where you can custom configure things e in even more detail. There's a lot of SEO preferences that you can customize. You can create a lot of custom privacy controls around uh, you know, access to pages, access to the app overall, access to certain data records, depending on you know, who the user is. Uh, you can create a multilingual app by setting up translations uh, in different languages. And there are a number of places where Bubble can send you notifications as the admin of the app, uh, and you can configure you know, which ones of those you receive, how often, things like that. All right, so now moving into the integration side of things here. This is one of my favorite areas of the Bubble platform, honestly, because this is what helps you create super sophisticated uh, uh, applications where you can automate systems, you can communicate with the outside world, right? You can have a lot of things flowing in and out of your application, and that just opens up a lot of possibilities. So the first subcomponent here are APIs. Every Bubble application uh, has the option to expose data API and workflow API. Bubble's already got you know, the, the uh, infrastructure of your APIs already built out. You don't have to worry about putting that together yourself, which is really helpful. Um, so for data API, other systems can uh, you know, make a call to your app to retrieve your data uh, or uh, make a call to your app to trigger workflows in your application. Uh, and, and of course, there's a lot of security settings that you can apply to these things so that only the right entities have access to those functions. There's also a plugin called the API Connector. It's probably my, my most used plugin where you can custom create calls uh, that you can trigger from your designs, uh, from your workflows to send that request externally. So if, I, you know, if a user fills out a form, they click on a button, we can have that information sent out to another system, like a CRM, for example. You can also use the API Connector to retrieve data from external systems. Okay, very, very powerful uh, capabilities here. Authentication, another really important uh, component of integrations. Bubble has the ability for you to uh, do third-party logins and signups, right? You can connect to Google accounts so that they can log into your app with their Google credentials, LinkedIn, Facebook, you know, all of those common platforms. Um, if you have more of an enterprise system and you're doing single sign-on, you can, you can implement that as well. There's you know, two-factor authentication that you can enable. So a lot of authentication uh, capabilities here uh, that, that involve integrating with other tools. Bubble also has a handful of third-party services that are already integrated, just built into the editor. So every application uh, can access this. For example, we have SendGrid, which is the default um, built-in email provider. If you're sending email from your app, Bubble's going to do this through SendGrid as the email service provider. You don't have to use SendGrid if you don't want. If you wanna use the API connector to connect to a separate emailing service and do it in a more custom way, you absolutely can. Uh, but SendGrid is the built-in uh, provider. Google location services are also built in. So if you're working with addresses and maps, if you're calculating distances, things like that, searching locations, um, that is also built in. You do have to retrieve some API keys in order to enable it, but there's documentation around that to help you with it. But it's a, it's a very helpful um, integration there. Bubble also has some integrations with Algolia. Uh, if you want to uh, store your data in an Algolia database and be able to search through that and take advantage of Algolia's uh, really sophisticated search features. You can customize how results are prioritized. 
things like that. Um, this can be alongside your, your database within your application, or it can be the sole uh, place where you have your data. It really just depends on what you're building. Uh, but there is um, a lot of built-in capabilities for that. Bubble also has a built-in capability for you to import Figma designs. Um, so if you've got your UIs organized in, in a Figma file, you can bring those in and Bubble will generate the pages as best as it can uh, from those files. Bubble also recently acquired Flusk, uh, which is a really handy security tool where it does an audit of your whole application and surfaces any issues that you may need to address where there might be some vulnerabilities, right? If you don't have privacy rules enabled, if there is certain access to pages that need to be addressed. Um, so this, these things, these services are already built into the editor right out of the box. You don't have to use them, um, but you can if you want to. Okay, and finally, we have the community component of the ecosystem here. Um, and the community is closely tied to the marketplace where, you know, if you want to install things uh, into your editor, uh, most of what's in the marketplace is created by the community. Um, the community subcomponents specifically here are the most removed from your editor uh, because it's really more about interacting with people. So we've got the forum, which I mentioned a little earlier. That's the Bubble official forum where you can ask questions, help each other out. You also have events. Bubble does put on um, some official events every once in a while. They have an annual conference. You'll also find local events put on by Bubble users, um, so those can be helpful. Uh, and then you have unaffiliated, you know, non-Bubble employees who are creating content. You know, we, we are one of those uh, where we don't work for Bubble, but we create a lot of educational material around how to use the platform. We have a lot of, um, you know, tips and walkthroughs around developing an app in general, strategy, testing with users, finding users, marketing, all of that uh, kind of thing. And community members are contributing to a marketplace that can then influence your app. Um, so plugins, I also mentioned a little earlier, there are free plugins, paid plugins. The vast majority of plugins are published by other Bubble users. You also have templates, which are also produced by the community. Uh, we've got a handful of them as well. Some are free, some are paid, but you can get a jump start on um, designs or certain pieces of functionality uh, for your application by using a template. Agencies are uh, can be a single individual, you know, Bubble user or a team of people who are more dedicated to uh, you know, doing work for the Bubble community. So you may hire an agency to build out your application for them or maybe build out a feature. You may hire an agency to just get some coaching or some troubleshooting. They may, you know, audit your application. Bubble has an entire area of their site that is dedicated to the agency marketplace so that you can be matched with the appropriate agency that, you know, if you're looking for a certain kind of help. You also have certified experts. So not every certified expert is necessarily an agency. Um, all the agencies do have to have a certain percentage of, of certified experts. Um, but these are folks who have passed a bubble certification exam to prove their competency uh, with the platform. I am a certified expert. Um, we are also an agency. Um, we are also a content creator, as you can see. So the idea behind, you know, the reason that I wanted to split this out is that it is a very important, uh, very large uh, arm of the entire Bubble ecosystem because there's so much learning that happens uh, within these two branches here, marketplace and communities. And you can, of course, add on extra capabilities to your editor through plugins, through templates, and even assistance um, from other folks who are, you know, have been around a little bit longer, who have more experience. It can really uh, help you move through the development uh, as efficient as possible. All right, I hope that was helpful. We've got more great lessons coming up for you on the next screen. And don't forget to register for that free extended workshop. The link for that is in the description below.